Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about Say. Uh, Say seems to be waking up exactly where it needs to, okay? And we're about to break the last swing high, which I mentioned yesterday as initial signal that we have bottomed in this region, okay? So we're going to talk about the structure now. Um, but basically, it would be the ideal spot um, to form a low already earlier today. I think the price was around, I don't know, 82 cents or so, uh, 83 maybe. I posted on Discord and Telegram that ideally I don't want it to break below the last low and ideally it's bottomed. Bit too early, of course, to confirm it, but it's looking good, it's looking interesting. Um, and we, yeah, well, let's take a look at the structure just um, just now. So um, obviously the white count is what I primarily follow at the moment. The white count allows for the price to have, to have bottomed, absolutely. And we talk about, first of all, the low in this wave four of the larger wave degree in which this correction an a b c structure this correction finished on the 23rd of january here at around 56 cents we've then seen an abc structure to the upside in wave one what i would call wave one of the larger fifth wave after the fourth wave bottomed here on the 23rd so we have this wave one to the upside, which peaked at around 75 cents. Wave two pullback, um, bottomed at around 59. And the third wave topped around $1. And then this fourth wave. Okay, so um, it was early. It was quite quite obvious quite early that we had topped here. Um, then we had the retest at the time I gave you a trend line. We had that retest of the trend line and then the sell off into the support region. So the idea is that the market in such a fourth wave should react to this support region. And there are four Fibonacci levels to watch, even though typically the 23.6 Fib level, which is there as well, is typically really only very, very weak. You know, oftentimes an A wave reacts to it. That's why I typically add it also for fourth waves. Normally I want a fourth wave, especially in a diagonal, and this is an ending diagonal pattern, the white count, um, at least I assume it is. So I normally want a fourth wave to at least in a diagonal get to the 38.2 FIB level. In an impulse, yeah, the 23.6, um, sorry, I wanted to go at least to the 38.2, yeah. And in an impulse, yeah, sometimes the 23.6 FIB level is acceptable, but more often than not, it's the A wave that reacts to that 23.6 FIB level. Then we see a B wave bounce as we've seen there as well. Let me zoom in a little bit. And then this C wave down. So it's it's a three wave move that we normally see in these corrections. Um, okay, you know, wave fours can also turn into triangles and all sorts of other patterns, but most frequently it is that ABC structure. And the B wave, yeah, did slightly overshoot, I think. And then, yeah, the C wave um, happened. So we then normally watch either for the 38.2 FIB level to cause a reaction. And we had a bit of a reaction, at least the market respected it. And then the 50% FIB level, the next one. Ideally, even in a diagonal, we don't want the 50% FIB level broken. In this case, 77.4 cents. If it breaks, okay, in a diagonal, I can accept the 61.8 retracement level, a so-called golden ratio, but it is still deeper than ideal. It would then already indicate weakness. And very often when that happens, we also see it break below the lower boundary line of the trend channel. And that's not good. That's typically not good and it indicates weakness. But, you know, we've had a reaction and 10% up in 24 hours as per trading view here. So it's looking good. Um, what did I highlight now as key breakout point? Well, to give us more evidence that indeed the market has bottomed, but it looks promising. I want to see a move above the last swing high at 88.8 .8 cents. Here are these swing highs. Um, and then obviously the market needs to move to, well, ideally anything above $1.07. So I still see $1.21 as a likely target. Zooming in, it seems like what we might see here is the development of an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Okay, so we might have here a left shoulder, a head. Testing the level at 88.8 .8 cents could cause a bit of a bounce or a pullback. And then um, if we can use then this ascending trend line of the trend channel, the lower boundary line as support, and probably I might be able to give you Fibonacci support as well, but that's a very, very small wave degree. 
then a push above 88.8 cents basically could push us above this so-called neckline of that inverse head and shoulders pattern. And that could be basically the trigger for the fifth wave to unfold. So I leave that um, resistance line there on the chart. But that's the next one. The next target for the bulls will be a break above 88.8 cents. Above that level, these previous swing highs are relevant, 95 cents. And then the area around $1.3, $1.4. And then we should be moving to $1.7 and ideally $1.21 plus to complete the five wave pattern that started on the 23rd of January. Um, if we now break down again, hmm, not ideal, not ideal. I mean, it, it wouldn't look good now, to be honest. Uh, but if it does, then 72.3 cents will still be support below that level. I haven't got anything reliable left. And then it was, it is likely this C wave down that is unfolding and it could simply be a so-called running flat, um, which might not go below the low of the A wave. So also that would be a bullish scenario, would be our backup plan. So that's my update about say. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.